Uh, I want to make welcome today a internationally renowned rock star, an official rock star, and uh, one of the most respected drummers in the world today. Uh, he has uh, played for um, Lenny Kravitz, uh, Frankie Valley in the Four Seasons, uh, Earth, Wind and Fire, some of the credits to his name. Uh, it just goes on and on and on. He's an international uh, motivational speaker as well. And uh, he also is known as the Minister of Groove. So make welcome with me today to the Praise the Lord show, Zorro. Thank you, Marty. That's a nice introduction. I appreciate that. Well, thanks. I'm glad you're here today. Uh, I just, uh, you know, we've known each other for a long time now yeah. and uh, have had a lot of uh, ministry experiences together. And, and uh, I know your heart and uh, you've got a real heart to reach this generation and to reach out to the young folks. Uh, and I've seen the impact of your ministry on their lives. And, uh, you know, I, I just have a, a few questions. At what age did you actually start playing drums? Because there may be some, some budding musicians out there that think they may be getting too old to actually get, you know, proficient on an instrument or that sort of thing. What age did you start playing? Well, first of all, I would say that nobody's ever too old to, to play any instrument. I mean, I, I, I have this belief that whatever gift that we have from God was deposited inside each of us before we were ever born. Absolutely. Whether we find it when we're 5, 10, 20, 40, 80, 90, doesn't matter. Whatever that gift is, it's still there. It's, it's to be uncovered and discovered. In fact, I met a woman um, at a conference that I spoke at. She was 90 some years old. She came wow. up to me after I played and she said, when you played the drums today, it, it did something to my spirit. And she was kind of like weeping. And she said, I always wanted to play drums when I was a little girl, but my father and the, the people always discouraged me because they said, girls don't play drums. And, uh, and I, I handed her a pair of my sticks. I said, ma'am, if you got that rhythm inside of you, you got to let it out. Here's your first pair of sticks. You go start playing the drums. And she was kind of crying. Now, wait a minute, 90. Yeah. 90 years old. Yeah, 90 old. years old. Wow. And she said she'd always wanted to play the drums. So. To me, the only time it's too late to start is when you're dead. Uh, yeah. as, as long as you're alive, it's never too late to start anything. I, I started, um, I had wanted to play since I was real young. Like I had wanted to play as long as I could remember. And uh, in fourth grade, I wanted to be in the school band, sign up for drums. But every year there was too many drummers and they said, we can't have you. Mm -hmm. So year after year, I was passed up and I wasn't able to play. I didn't really start till I was in the 10th grade. And wow. it, even though every year I, great. So what? I was like 16, almost About 17 16 when I started, but the desire to start came real early. Mm -hmm. And in fact, the very first drum set that I, uh, that I received, my mother gave me when I was 10 years old, um, we moved from Los Angeles, California, and we moved up to a little small town in Oregon called Grants Pass, Oregon. And for that first Christmas there, uh, you know, it was hard to adjust to this new land. And my mother got me a Mickey Mouse drum set. It was literally Mickey Mouse on the bass drum. It was a, out of the wow. Sears catalog for nine ninety nine, and it lasted uh, about a day. <laughs> well, it lasted <laughs> it lasted actually all up to the evening, because it was made of paper heads, and I destroyed it. Yeah. But that kind of ignited the dream in me and the fire of yeah. the, just connecting to the drums. It wouldn't Spirit be till several that, years if later. That God put in you. Yeah, and and, and so that Christmas was when I uh, like officially hit them, and then it went away for another six or seven years mm -hmm. till I got a real drum set at 16. So um, I started, that was fairly late uh, for most people who are trying to uh, yeah. do this professionally. Wow. Uh, was, it, uh, was it difficult uh, in the years following, uh, you know, meeting the right people and, and that sort of thing? I mean, kind of tell us a little bit of your story. How did you connect? How did you become one of the world's greatest drummers? Uh, for that, I have to give the Lord all of the credit in the, in the sense that I believe, you know, the, the word says the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. So I'm not righteous because I was righteous, but I believed in Jesus and pursued him mm. from a young, as a young boy. So I think that the Lord was already ordaining certain steps for me. And uh, one thing I've learned in this journey, you know, is that we, we can't manipulate anything. We can't make certain things happen. All I can do 
is prepare myself as best as possible by developing my gift and exercising my uh, talent and, and being an affable person and easy to get along with and working hard for people. But I have never had the ability to make somebody hire me, uh, want to work with me, want me to speak, teach, play, record. I don't have that power. If, we, if any of us had that power, we'd be using it all day long to manipulate the world to do what we want, to, want them to do for us. But yeah. it's not possible. Um, and so my dream was really, you know, a dream that was God placed in my heart. He gave me visions of what that looked like. Um, and I r journaled and wrote a lot of things down, even from a very young age. I could pull out a piece of paper right now from when I was 16, hmm. where I wrote down the things that I wanted to do and accomplish. And I, st I still have that piece of paper. And it's amazing what has transpired from that little, tiny little piece of orange paper that I wrote yeah. at the county fair. Uh, but those were dreams that God already placed in me. I, I think uh, for me, it started with the vision of what I want to do, what I want to accomplish. And I try to teach people in, in today's world, there's a difference between a dream and a delusion. Mm -hmm. And we're living in a, in a day and age where there's a lot of delusions out there and there's a lot of delusional people. And people want to succeed at something in a delusional sense, without the necessary gifting, without yeah. the necessary work, without or willing the to pay the price, yeah, yeah, or willing to pay the price. Yeah. And so, unfortunately, you have lots of shows like you know, like American Idol, where everybody wants to be a star without cultivating the talent and without earning it. Yeah. And so, a dream to me always has structure to it, yeah. always has strategy, always has a game plan, and God's always involved in this step-by-step -step process, of which it takes a long time to fulfill a God vision. Yes. Uh, at least, it, at least it did for me. And yeah. Look at uh, uh, David. Uh, he had the call to become uh, king of all of Israel, and God. Uh, took him from a shepherd boy and took him through all those processes and took him from cave to cave. You know, I don't see uh, in, in the world today a lot of people willing to pay the price to hang out, do what's right, hold a good heart and go from cave to cave until the day that God actually opens the door. It's not their hand opening it. Actually, David had opportunity to open his own doors and he refused to do it and make it happen. He waited for the hand of the Lord to open for it. It sounds like that's what, that's what happened in well, your life. And that's, that's hard to do because it's hard to sometimes discern. You know, there's, there's the part, you know, the Bible says we're co-laborers with Christ, you know. Mm -hmm. there's, there's the part that we do and there's the part that He does. Yeah. The, the, uh, the initial part that I know that the God does is, uh, you know, deposit the gifting in us, period, which is something we can't give ourselves. We can't take a pill and have a, a talent magically that we want. So right. God does that part, but it's this journey where we co-labor with Him. Where And so the hardest part to me of the journey is like, well, when am I to press in and work really hard? And when am I, because, you know, faith is an active thing. So you can't develop a gift and be great by laying on the couch and just saying, well, God's going to do it, do it. And, yeah. and, you know, so, and, and there's trial and error in all of the processes of learning and God, you know, I, I, I believe God has, is not hiding things from us, yeah. but he's hiding them for us to discover. You know, t let's talk about that for a minute, because I think that there's a, you know, a lot of, uh, visions is what I call them. You know, there's visions and there's visions. <laughs> Things that your vision was your vision. And uh, in order to get the real vision, uh, you, you've got to pay a price. But the real vision inside of you, in my opinion, becomes the fuel that takes you to that vision, the, the, that propels you uh, to that place. And so I think, uh, you know, that's one of the identifiers that we talk about uh, in our church is that, uh, you know, the vision is something that you can't get away from. It's something that's in there. It's something that's continually coming up. And, you know, I, I just, uh, I'm one of those uh, faith guys that just believes God can do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think or hope or dream or imagine. And so uh, t talk just for a minute about, uh, you know, some of the price that you paid. Then I want to get into the book because the book is really phenomenal. Well, thank you. The book is just another vision that God gave me. You know, when I was a young, young boy, I was looking for a book, you know, to help me understand how all, how, what it, what it meant to be a successful musician and what that road looked like. But I mean, the price to pay is, um, 
I, I believe that to fulfill God's vision for our life, you know, the, the actual thing that he has for us to do mm -hmm. will cost us everything. Yeah. And I believe that because we know there's a, there's a God, but we also know there's an enemy of God. So the enemy of God does not want to see you succeed at the vision that God has for you. Because if you actually fulfill the vision that God has for you and the purpose for which he has it, my life isn't about, <clears throat> you know, becoming a successful musician or speaker or writer. Those are just all platforms of which to reach people for the kingdom of God. Whatever success God wants to give me as a result of that is his business. But the purpose of all these things, the purpose why we should excel at the gifts and skills and talents that we have is that in that realm we, we're going to reach people for the kingdom of God. We're going to express who God is through our unique talents, our unique personalities. And the whole point is so that people could experience Christ through us. It just so happens that in my life, in, in the world of music and whatever notoriety or fame or platform I've had, just as a launching pad for me to reach many more people and influence many more people. Mm -hmm. And I try to use that platform wisely and judiciously because I understand the purpose of it. Mm -hmm. The purpose of it is not the thing itself. The purpose is that you're going to touch and reach people with it. But to do that, it will cost you everything you have because the enemy is always going to try to stop you and discourage you from fulfilling that God vision because why, if this is a real battle like Lord of the Rings, why would the enemy want you to become a general and help a bunch of people get free? Yeah. No, right. no, no, no enemy would say, let the, let the, let the guy do his thing so he could help win. So there's always going to be, I always try to tell, tell people, there's always going to be opposition mm -hmm when you're fulfilling the plan of God, like I Joseph. I think people don't realize that we are in a conflict, uh, that there is a real devil out there that really does hate Christians and really does want to take you out of a comfort zone and bring you into a war zone. I mean, God wants to take you out of the comfort zone, bring you into the war zone. The devil wants to take you out of the war zone, keep you in the comfort zone, because if he can keep you there, then he can defeat you every time. And and there's and that's to totally true. And And the bottom line is, in pursue, if you study anybody in the Bible, anybody who ever fulfilled anything that God asked them to do, man, there was always a price to pay. And there was always, oh, yeah. faith was always, to, it was never just some easy thing where they didn't, nothing was required. My whole life has required to fulfill all of these dreams and vision has required, the simplest thing is re, that it has required is also the most difficult thing. And that is just to believe Mm -hmm. to believe against all odds, to believe against the natural circumstances of what you see, right. and then to believe by the actions that you are. Uh, for, for me to write that book, I had to believe a lot of different things. You know, I, I wrote a 440 page motivational book. You're looking at a guy who barely graduated, you know, high school. <laughs> I never took a writing class in my life. I had to overcome wow. all kinds of different natural obstacles. Wow. And, 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 and I wrote it over a period of 15 years. Yeah. It wasn't just some instant thing. And I, I this is a life work. Yeah. Let me just take a minute and say, this is the book that we're talking about. It's called uh, The Big, Big Gig. Big, Big Picture and Thinking for Success. Big Picture Thinking for Success. And uh, you can get this at? Uh, anywhere, it's on Amazon, it's on iTunes, it's on my own website, thebiggigbook.com. It's at Barnes and Noble. Zorro the Drummer. Zorro the Drummer dot com. Okay. My website, but now talk just a minute about this book because uh, people from all kind of different backgrounds. You've got an endorsement in here from Quincy Jones, from Joyce Meyer, uh, from Regis Philbin, from Lincoln B Brewster. Stephen Baldwin, Sinbad the Comedian, these are all friends of yours that uh, bought into Zorro a long time ago and decided they wanted to put their seal of endorsement on this for others to be encouraged by this the way that you've encouraged them as well. So talk a little bit about some of that. Well, the, the book is, is 22 chapters and every chapter is the art of something. Mm -hmm. And there's an art to everything in life. So it begins with the art of vision. And then it's the art of attitude and strategy and the art of learning, the art of practicing. And then it gets into very uh, personal things. And the, the last chapters are about the, you know, the art of relationship and the art of giving. And, and um, God gave me a picture of what success looked like because when I was a young boy, you know, like anybody young, you want to be successful mm -hmm. and you want to 
but then you got to learn that success means different things to different people. Mm. So I had to figure out, well, what did it, what does it mean to me? And I searched my heart with the Lord and, and God gave me something that I shared at the beginning of the book. And I framed my version of success around those three principles. And that is that we're created for uh, vocational success, which is we have some gifting, some skill, some talent that God wants us to take to a high level of excellence. And whether we make a lot of money with that or not doesn't matter. It just means that we exercise that gift and that we excel at it and that people are touched by that talent. The right. other one is personal success. So say that again just for a second. Okay. Money is not the qualifier no. of success. No, no, not, not on vocational success at all because some of us will make tons of money and some of us will make hardly anything. We can't say that some guy in Africa who's doing great charitable work that no one's ever going to know is not successful by God Absolutely. because he's using his gift or talent to help a, right. a bunch of people in need. No one may ever know who this guy is, but if he's exercising that gift, that gift of compassion or that gift of building or whatever it is or a gift of administration, then he is successful by God's standards because he's excelling at that gift mm -hmm. and he's helping people. So that's, that, the, that's vocational success. So on the, on the day that we stand before the Lord, he's not going to say, well done, good my rich servant. financial. <laughs> yeah. He's not going to uh, say, well done, my great banker. No, it's going to be by the faithfulness, faithfulness of what you had yeah. and did you use it to serve him. So, but I believe that, so good. I believe that in the church, there's a lot of people who don't pursue their vocational talent because they view success as worldly. And so they use that as an excuse, as a crutch to be lazy, not to develop something because they associate yeah. being good at something with worldly people. And that's a cop out because God wants you to excel at that, at that gift so that people are touched and blessed by, by your, your anointing. Right. And then there's personal success, which most of, uh, you know, the world, the uh, Hollywood worldly types uh, don't equate with success because it's only just being famous and rich. Right. right. But personal success is just as important to God, which is thriving in relationships, whether it's uh, husband and wife, father, daughter, you know, relation, everything we're going to accomplish. That's the big gig. That's the, the big gig is how you really succeed with people because yeah. at the end of the day, it's really all about that. And then there's the spiritual success to me, which is your relationship with the Lord and your closeness with the Holy Spirit and fulfilling your purpose in this life. And there's a lot of people that have two parts of that success, but not all three. They might be spiritually successful, which means they got a great relationship with the Lord, but they're not getting along with people and they don't have anything going on great in their personal life with people, yeah. or they, they've got vocational success and personal success, but they don't know who God is. Yeah. And they don't understand the purpose of it. Right. So to me, I frame everything around those three things because I believe we're not really content unless we're flowing in all three. So someone looking at this book, they don't have to be a drummer. Absolutely not. To get anything out of this. I mean, I think some people might think, well, if Zorro, the world famous icon drummer, uh, wrote this book, it must be about drumming. No, it's, it's kind of like, would you read a book uh, on Michael Phelps, the Olympic champion, because you want to be a swimmer? Or would you just like to learn his motivational principles yeah. on how he succeeded? You're going to learn a little bit more about music than maybe you thought. Mm -hmm. But if you're a person who's interested in learning anything, I read biographies and things on different people, not because I'm going to be a yeah. tennis player or a football player, because I love their principles or, or, or mm -hmm. their, their life story. In there, in the 22 chapters, is my story and many other people's stories of how these principles work. Yeah. They're godly principles that lead to the fulfillment of dreams and there's purpose in them. And I also love the power of words. Uh, since I was a young boy, I have yeah. been collecting motivational quotes and phrases and I have over 400 motivational quotes throughout. Yeah. The, the only thing I can tell you about the book, uh, the main thing that I can tell you is that it was a vision that God gave me to help people, to release other people into their destiny through my story. And I've gotten Facebook messages and email messages from around the world from people who've told me the book has changed their life. And yeah. that is the reward. It's not whatever money I get from the book, I could care less. Mm -hmm. it, the reward is that somebody's life was changed who read the book. And many of them were not musicians. They were just regular people who somebody turned them on to the book. And to me, that's why I wrote it. It was a mandate from God. It was a call to release people to understand what these things look like. Well, I, uh, I have my own success story from this book. Uh, you know, we've, uh, we've uh, required our kids to read this book, which you know our family very well. And, uh, and I think it's, 
it's an essential uh, if you're a if you're really wanting to become successful uh, in any field. Uh, it's an easy read, even though it's a very thick book, by the way. Right. <laughs> it's an easy read, and it's very inspirational, and uh, and I think the heartbeat throughout it is not just drumming or music or or success or to be motivated, but the heartbeat throughout it is God's heartbeat. It talks about how uh, God took a young man uh, in the middle of a uh, rough situation, took two drumsticks and brought him to the top and he kept his faith the whole time. Well, thank you, Mark. That's very, uh, I mean, that's very profound and I, I'm touched by that. It, it, it just, it's just proof that God, with God, all things are possible. The the dreams that I, I mean, and I was just talking to a, a fellow earlier and we were sharing uh, about different drummers and things. And on the way here, I was driving. I was just thinking about God's goodness in my life. Just, just these things I dreamed of and people that I once idolized that then became friends of mine. And then they would send me an email telling me how much they liked my drumming. You know, just things that <laughs> I just God's goodness is amazing. And, all, all, and, and I'm no different than anybody else. And all I realize is that he has... He has good things stored up for everybody, but we're involved in the process. We're not robots. You know, God could have made us to be robots and do whatever he wanted, but then we free will wouldn't exist and we couldn't really express who we really are. So I think he just looks for courageous people who will just believe him. Yeah. And I, I was just, a, I'm a very simple person. The book is very easy reading because I, I wrote it like I talk. I, yeah. I'm not trying to write to impress people or use. I mean, 20 minutes just went by in seconds. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? It's very easy to hear you talk. Well, thank you, Marty. I, I appreciate that. But the, the, the joy in me is, is in helping other people. Because mm. um, what's the point at the end of my life? Well, what's the point of going, I played with all these people, or I wrote these books. You know, I, you start measuring your life. I always, I'm always intrigued by eternity. And I've always read a lot of books about what people are thinking about in their last days, you know, in their last minutes of life, their last mm -hmm. weeks of life. And no one's ever thinking about, I wish I made more money. No one's ever thinking about, I wish I was more famous. I wish there were more buildings named after me. I wish I had more Grammy. Everyone's yeah. thinking about, I wish I would have done more. I wish I would have helped people more. I wish I would have been kinder. They're always, those are yeah. all the regrets from believers and non-believers. So yeah. I don't want to live that way. I want to live knowing this in advance that I don't have those regrets, that I've spent my life trying to build and help other people so therefore I use the gift and the skills that God gave me appropriately. That the, the, the question to ask yourself in your journey is how many people's lives have gotten better because of yours? Mm. That's really awesome. the question. How many, how many people's life is better because I'm on the planet? If you can't say that there's a lot of people's life is better, we're doing the wrong stuff. Yeah. Because our life is really about affecting other people's lives. And, and the work that we do and the name that we have or the money, whatever resources that God's gifted us with are the tools of which to do that. Yeah. Some have more, some have less, but it's really all about faithfulness to what you have. Yeah. And so to me, it's like, I want to affect as many people as possible, lead as many people as possible to the kingdom of God. But while they're on earth, help people to become fruitful and, and produce fruit. Because I always tell young people, I said, imagine yourself, and I'll tell that to your sons, imagine yourself as a tree. If you were an apple tree today and somebody were to take the apple off your tree and bite into it, what would they say? Would they say, this is a mealy apple? Oh, I'll spit it out. This is a yummy apple. Or I found a worm in this apple. Or mm -hmm. this is one tasty, delicious, juicy apple. Man, it's nourishing me. It's because we are producing fruit 24-7. Yeah. The question is, what kind of fruit are we producing? Yeah. And is it feeding the people that are hungry, that are starving, That's that right. are dying, that need what we have? Are we yeah. feeding people with our life? And I want to be a big giant apple tree that has abundant apples that everywhere I went in life, somebody was able to, whether it was whether it was through kindness, whether it was through affirmation, whether it was through a drum pattern, whether it was a, a t television appearance, doesn't matter to me. They're all ways of which to produce fruit. Wow. And we're all producing something and people need good fruit in their life. Well, it's been a great privilege to have you here today on the Praise the Lord show. I'm, uh, I just, uh, so much to go back over. I could talk with you. You know, we spend a lot of time talking, so, uh, but thank you for coming out today. What a privilege. Uh, I want to encourage you to come uh, 
uh, get, I don't know how to hold this. Here we go. There we go. The Big Gig. There it is by Zorro. I encourage you to go out and buy a copy. It's going to make a great blessing, a great gift to some uh, person in your life and maybe even to you. Uh, the Lord has really d deposited great gifts in us and, and uh, this is a tool to mine those gifts and, uh, and to really become all that God created us to be. So thank you for being here today, Zorro. Really appreciate you. And uh, I want to uh, just uh, encourage you. Uh, uh, this is a, a new season of life uh, for so many. And, uh, and uh, so many are looking for answers. Get a hold of this book. It'll transform your life. Amen.